welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10 Guys. My name is Danny Berg and today is June the 7th, 2016. Now for some of you, that might just be yet another Tuesday, hopefully a nice Tuesday. But for any of our Muslim viewers out there, today is one of the most important dates on the calendar, the start of Ramadan. Now those viewers might know a lot of what I'm about to talk about, although hopefully you might learn a new thing or two. But for those of you who aren't Muslim, let's find out what it's all about and take a look at the top 10 facts about Ramadan. At number 10, Ramadan is observed by Muslims all over the world. It's actually the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and commemorates the first revelation of the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad, where he was visited by the Archangel Gabriel in 610 AD, who revealed a verse from what is now the Quran, the Muslim holy book. Coming in at number 9, it's one of the five pillars of Islam. The five pillars of Islam are the foundations of any Muslim's life. They are taught as mandatory and the fourth of the five pillars is fasting. Now this ritual fasting is an obligatory act where Muslims do not eat, drink or smoke from dawn until dusk for the whole of the month of Ramadan. This is the physical act which is meant to help them reflect on their own sins and to cleanse their bodies and minds and experience kinship with fellow believers. At number 8, the name Ramadan comes from the Arabic word Ramad which means being scorched by the hot sun. The old Arabic word Ramadat was used to describe sheep that have been burned while grazing in the hot sun. And so Ramadan was used to describe this holy month because God, known as Allah, burns the sins of believers away. I personally love finding out the origins of words. Moving on to number 7 now. Fasting during Ramadan is a mandatory obligation for all Muslims but there are exceptions to the rule. Those who are exempt from fasting are firstly women who are pregnant where fasting might hurt the baby, also menstruating women or those bleeding from childbirth. Also both physically and mentally ill people as well as the old and the weak are exempt. There are also a number of compensatory ways that Muslims can make up for not taking part during the fasting such as fasting for one day for every day that they missed after Ramadan or perhaps giving a meal to a poor person. At number six, now, the start of Ramadan for many people is decided by the sighting of the new moon. A new moon comes with the beginning of a new month, so most people can make a good estimate about when the start of Ramadan will be. But many places still follow the old teachings that you actually need a visual confirmation of a new moon for it to begin. So weather conditions can result in different start times for Muslims around the world. However, in the modern world, most Muslims agree on pre-arranged dates based on astronomical calculations. I even found a website out there that tells you when Ramadan will start in 2032 in case you really want to plan ahead. Moving on to number 5, charity is an important aspect of Ramadan. As well as fasting, Muslims are always obliged to be charitable under the zakat pillar of Islam, but especially so during Ramadan. This is because Ramadan is supposed to be a time of sacrifice and empathy for Muslims when they try to be more generous to those who are less fortunate than themselves. According to Islamic regulations, Muslims are expected to donate about 2.5% of their yearly earnings to charity. At number 4 now, fasting during the month of Ramadan takes place every single day between when the sun comes up and when the sun comes down. Depending on how far you are from the equator though, the time between these two can be very different from one place to the next. In the polar regions, for example, during summer, a day will end up being 22 hours long with only 2 hours of actual darkness. So that means 22 hours of fasting. So for Muslims living in countries like Iceland and Norway, which can be quite close to the polar regions, this can present a bit of a problem. So some stay true to the teachings and fast for exactly 22 hours, but others will use the same hours as the nearest city that has a normal sunrise or sunset. Or they might even use the same timings as Mecca, the Muslim holy city in Saudi Arabia. Coming in at number 3 now, in the evening when the sun goes down, Muslims break the fast by eating dates. This is because eating dates was how the Prophet Muhammad broke his fasting. Dates also contain high levels of natural sugar, so they kind of make the ideal first food to eat when your body is already in a slightly weakened state from fasting. Many Muslims believe that this boost of energy is needed if they are to start eating normally again because digesting meals uses energy, so it is healthier to get some dates in you before you start eating a meal. At number 2, Sunni and Shia are the two different denominations of Islam. Now they do share a lot of the core beliefs within Islam, but they differ on a number of key issues including Ramadan. 
For Sunni Muslims, they believe that the fast can only be broken as soon as their daily Maghreb prayers begins, which is when the sun is no longer visible in the sky. But is that actually classed as sunset just because you can't see the sun? Or Shiite Muslims say it's not, and they actually wait longer, claiming that the fast cannot be broken until every last bit of light has left the sky. And finally, at number one, just like the beginning of Ramadan, the end of it is signified by the sighting of the new moon. Now, this holiday is called Eid al Fitr in Arabic, and just like the start of Ramadan, weather conditions can sometimes make it kind of difficult for a visual confirmation of when Ramadan has actually ended. So, many Muslims mark the end by the completion of 30 days of fasting. This is a day of celebration where Muslims dress their best, they share gifts, go to events, have meals, and spend time with their families after a long month of self reflection. Bonus fact the White House has actually held an Eid al Fitr dinner every single year for the past 20 years. Well, guys, that was our 10 facts about Ramadan, which starts today. I hope that everyone learnt something. I know I personally did. I learnt a lot, and I hope my Arabic pronunciations were okay. Almost every day of the year is an important day for someone or some group of people in the world. So, do you want us to cover any other day and do 10 facts about that day? If you do, then make yourself heard in the comment section below. Ramadan Mubarak to all our Muslim viewers out there. Thanks for watching Most Amazing Top 10, guys. My name's Danny Burke, and I'll see you guys soon.